Hey there, my name is Ali. Today is gonna be like a very important tutorial. We'll discuss the brushes, the clone stamp, the sharpen, the dodge and burn, and the eraser. Okay, let's start with the first thing, the brush. The short key for the brush is B. So if you're standing on anything and you press B, you get the brush. You have some tools up there. This is my brush actually. So the first thing we're gonna learn about the brush is that when you press right click, you have two things for every brush, a size and the hardness. Okay, size is basically just the size of the brush. If you increase it, you have bigger brush. If you reduce the size, you have smaller brush. Hardness is that if you have 100% and you press click, then you press right click and you make it 0% and you press click. This is the difference between hardness of 100% and 0%. The 0%, as you can see, it fades out. The 100% is like a sharp brush okay now I'm gonna teach you like a very useful tip for the brushes the size and the hardness they have some sort of a short keys they have like the plus bracket and the minus bracket but this is not very useful what is useful or the one which I recommend you get you getting used to use it is holding the alt button and pressing right click and then going right will make it bigger Going left will make it smaller. Going down will make it harder. Going up will make it softer. So this is very easy. For example, I want to paint something here, but it's a little bit bigger. So I'm going to hold alt right click, paint. Then I want something here small. Then I want something big. Then I want something small. So this is like the fastest way to work with the size and the hardness of the brush. So now we don't have to press right click and play around. Okay. The other thing when you press right click is you get is that handle you can rotate your brush but obviously it's a circle if you rotate it it doesn't make any difference however you can stretch it down so now let's say 100% hardness you see now how it looks like so now we can rotate it around okay another thing in the brush itself on the top, we're not gonna discuss the moods now, it's advanced, I'll do it in another tutorial, but I'm gonna discuss the opacity. If you use a lower opacity, and you paint with like 20% opacity, then you go 100% and you paint, you see, this one is 20% transparent, I, I mean 80% transparent, 20% visible, and this one is 100% visible, 0% transparent. Okay. Let's go back to our brush. If you look here now, we have something called the presets. These are things built in with Photoshop. So you automatically can use a hard brush or you can automatically use a soft brush. They are already built in Photoshop. You have this one. It's some sort of like a, a tilted brush. I'll press Ctrl Z to go back. And you have some stuff here, which is like the... It's like you're painting with a, like, uh, like the artists use a brush, a real brush. You can use like some sort of like brush. This one will create some sort of a strokes. You can use it to paint. So there are a lot of brushes actually. These ones are like a spray. You can use them like some sort of a spray. This one is actually really cool. If you use it, it adds like some sort of like leaves. If you use it, let's say, with an orange color like that, we can have, like, leaves. It even changes the color. We have this one also. It's some sort of a grass. This one also, grass. All these are built in Photoshop. We have this one. Just, like, a lot of brushes you can use to play around. This one is, like, a star, I guess. They look like stars, actually. Let me zoom in. Yeah, just like textures. Okay, the really cool thing about brushes is that you can actually create a custom brush. How we're gonna do that, I'm gonna take you step by step through it. Open your internet and just write free cloud brush, for example. Let's go to the first one. Let's press like the free download. Okay, it's taking a little bit of time. Okay, let's save it on our desktop. It's in zip format. We're gonna extract it. Because Photoshop does not read like zip files. It must be .abr for a brush. Let's say this is the one. Let's drag it. 
to the desktop. Okay, now we have our brush file. Okay, in the Photoshop, when we press right click, now we only have these brushes. Okay, let's make this a little bit larger, a little bit more. Okay, now we have these brushes. You have the gear icon here on the top right. If you open it, you can play around like with how the brushes look like and everything. Just like try this. You can actually choose one brush and delete it, rename one of them, or you can do like several stuff. Let's jump to the important thing, which is load brushes. You go to load brushes. We jump to the desktop. We found this one, which is cloud by Milan. I don't know. Dot ABR. This is the one we just downloaded. I press load. You see now I have a new set of brushes. The brushes work with the foreground color. So for example, this is the owner. For example, if I use an orange, it will be orange. If I use white, it will be white. Okay, let's see the cloud brushes we created. When you choose a brush, just click up there so you get rid of this menu. Let's press Ctrl Z to get rid of this one. Okay, this is a cloud brush now. I'll hold Alt, right click, go to the right to make it stronger. Like it's sorry, bigger, and I'll just like draw. You see, we just created clouds in few seconds. We can take like a different one, make it larger, something like that. Let's just try. I'm trying like the brushes that Melanda have. Okay, this is really cool, actually. Like you see, we created like some sort of clouds in just few seconds. And this is like we just downloaded it from the internet for free. Okay. If I have like a lot of brushes and I want to get rid of them, I'll just press reset brushes. It will bring every back to the normal, which is the Photoshop basic brushes. Okay. Now I guess this is like the, uh, the basics anyone would need to know about the brushes. However, what the brush does, let's be like, the brush actually add pixels with the foreground color. Okay. Let's take something called the clone stamp tool. The clone stamp tool is a tool which copies something from a place and place it on another place. So for example, if I hold alt, alt will stamp. So if I hold alt and click here, and then if I move the mouse, you see what's happening? I'm like copying this area into any area I want. Let's say here. Okay, this is a complete different tool than the brush, but why I explained that? Because in the clone stamp tool, if you press right click, you get exactly the same options the brush have. Even the brushes that we loaded, which were the cloud brushes, we also got them. If you press, if you pick like, let's say the M1, and if you press Alt right click, you can also make it bigger and smaller the same way. Let's say I'll press Alt and clone from here. You see what's happening now? We are clone stamping from here using the brush. Now we're not using the foreground color like the brush. We're holding Alt. You see the cursor change. Now we're copying from here. I'll press click. Now we're copying from here. And then I'll move it here. Now we copy this area to that area using that brush. Okay, this is the clone stamp tool. Okay, let's go to the eraser tool. The eraser tool, what it does, it actually just erases pixels from your photo. It just deletes them. However, why I explained this with, with the brush itself, because it has like even the opacity, you can erase with low opacity. If I make it like 4%, I'm only erasing a little bit. If I make it 100%, I'm erasing all. If I press right click, I will have the same options. I have hardness, so can I can erase in a faded manner. I can use alt, right click, make it bigger and smaller. I can press right click and use actually my clouds to just erase in the form of the clouds we just added. I can use this M for Melanda and just erase using it. Okay, now everything is good. Let's jump to the sharpen, blur, and smudge tool. Okay, let's go first with the blur tool. The blur tool, what it does just basically, like using its name, it just blurs your photo. But also you can use the same brush tools. You can blur in any manner you want. Let's say I want to blur in a hard brush. You have here something called strength. This is how strong your blur is gonna be. Let's say I wanna blur this one. I'll hold click and blur. You see what's happening? It's becoming a lot blurry. Okay, this is what the blur tool does. I can use actually the M. Okay, and I can blur just using the M. I don't know if it will be visible. It won't be visible actually. 
because it's just blurring the pixels but you saw what the blur tool does let's go to the sharpen tool the sharpen tool is the same we have the same options let's say i want to sharpen an area with a hundred percent strength in sharpen actually we have something called sample all layers if you have a lot of layers and you click it it will sample all the layers okay let's say i want to sharpen the rocks i'll make it smaller and i'll sharpen these rocks you see what's happening it's making everything very sharp but this is like so strong of a like effect so you can reduce the strength and you can just let's make it 40 and you can just make it like sharp something like that if you want like things to be sharper and you can use like a custom brush like the m and you can keep pressing click 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 now you see this area got a little bit sharper i'll do it with a hundred percent click 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 keep pressing clicks until it keeps like repeating you see what happened it made this area a lot sharper okay the last one is the smudge tool it has the exact same options let's go with the soft one click up if i want to get rid of this menu make sure it's 100% you can like play around if it's too strong what the smudge tool does it 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 likes it's it liquefies everything together so if i press click here and i pull you see what's happening it's pulling the pixels together so i can like merge all the pixels together like that i can like play around with it it's a little bit slow you can make it like using a hard brush but the edges is going to be hard like you see you can do it using the soft brush you can do it using any of these brushes actually something like that you can do it using the m that for melanda you see you can use it using the cloud brushes actually we can like cloud brush everything together with a low strength if you don't want it to be strong you see what's happening it's like moving all the pixels together okay it has the same menu as the brush you can load you can erase you can do everything Okay, the last thing I'm gonna go through is called the dodge and burn tool and the sponge tool. Okay, usually we won't use the sponge a lot, but we're gonna use the dodge and burn. Okay, the basic for the dodge, it will be in something called midtones. I'll have a separate tutorial explaining the difference between shadows, highlights, and midtones. But mainly what the dodge does, if you click here, first it works exactly the same as a brush. You can use any brush and it has the exposure is how strong it is. Let's say we made it the strongest 100%. If you use the dodge tool and you click here, it will make everything brighter. If you use the burn tool, 100%, it will make everything the opposite, darker. If you use the sponge tool, you have two options, saturate or desaturate. If you use it, saturate with 100%, it's same as brush. It will increase the color of everything. If you put it on desaturate and you keep like painting, 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 sorry, you know, okay, if this happened to you, just take that, don't press the maximize, it won't fix, just drag it up there until it gets back to its original position. Let's say I'm in desaturate and I'm like, keep clicking, you see what happens? It, it like takes out all the colors, leaving you with black and white. If you put it on the opposite, it will increase the colors make it more like colorful okay now we're done with today's tutorial but i want to like recap a little bit fast first thing we set the brush tool we have a lot of custom brushes we have size and hardness holding alt moving right and left will make it bigger moving up and down will make it smaller if you're using a mac and not windows hold command and option and press right click and move left and right okay if you want to add custom brush, you go to this one, you click on load brushes, and then you select your file. You, you can download them by just Google, write free brushes of anything you want. Okay, you have here opacity. If you make low opacity and you paint, it will be a very subtle effect. If you make high opacity and paint, it will be really strong. Another thing we have is like when you download brushes, you can use them like to create clouds and everything. Okay, that's for the brushes. Let's go to the clone stamp. The clone stamp, we said how it works. You hold Alt, you sample from a place, then you add it to the second place. Then we had the blur, blur, blurring object. Sharpen will sharpen your objects. Smudge will like move the objects around together. Then we had the dodge tool and sponge tool. The dodge brightens. The burn from its name, it's like burning something will make it darker. 
And finally, the sponge tool will either saturate or desaturate your photo. And finally, we have the eraser. You can use any eraser you want and you can delete anything you want on Photoshop. If you have any questions, guys, make sure you add them in the comments below. Thank you for listening to this tutorial.